Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I'm gonna introduce you to another amazing library that helps us segment uh, images down to an object level. I'll talk about what type of objects in a minute, but on the screen, I'm flashing a few examples to give you a good idea. And I'm going to cover a couple of these in the upcoming videos. So if you relate to any of these, so stay tuned and uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button so I know exactly what type of content you guys are requesting, you guys are appreciating. And on the screen, you can see a whole slide image with a whole bunch of nuclei segmented right there. I'm gonna show you that in a couple of videos from now. And I'm going to talk about how you can train this model using your own custom data set for your object level segmentation. And also going to uh, show a couple of uh, histopathology related type of images. And this also works on non-bio type of images as long as your objects follow certain rules. And let me talk about that in a couple of uh, slides from now. So let's jump on to the next slide and understand exactly what the star dist is. This is the library that we're going to use as part of our Python. And uh, why do we need it? Because for segmentation, I covered I don't know how many tens, almost 100 videos on the topic of UNet. I covered zero videos on the topic of mask or CNN because you guys keep asking, but I, I never got into using it because I never found the need to go beyond the toolkit that I have and explore mask or CNN. I know it's good for some things, but I'm not a big fan of that for scientific applications. Also, I do not have a lot of in-depth personal experience in that. So please excuse me if you're looking for those videos. But why in the world do we need Stardust if we have these amazing ones that do a great job? Like for example, if you look at UNIT, UNIT does an amazing job on many, many, many types of examples. But oftentimes if the if the problem is a bit more challenging, like if your objects are connected, but they need to be separated, right? I mean, this is one nuclei, this is another nuclei. So these are all like independent, but if they're close by, then to, to get to, down to a object level, segmentation, you can follow certain tricks. You can actually add border around it, around each object and treat the border boundary as another class and you can actually do the training. I talked about this uh, in the past and I make, uh, uh, made a video on this topic so you know exactly what I'm talking about. But those type of tricks are okay, but still uh, it, it, it fails at separating the objects in a very, uh, very consistent way, especially in these crowded scenarios. So that's one limitation of unit. You can try a few variations like attention units and others, but still you'll run into some limitations. But mask or CNN is great for object level segmentation. And if your objects are like this, it works great. But the way mask or CNN works is it performs the segmentation after localizing these objects initially. And while it's localizing, it's obviously using these bounding boxes and they often result in poor approximation of your actual nuclei. I'm using these words right out of Stardust people. And I totally agree with, uh, I mean, I have nothing to disagree there. Let me put it that way. So there is a reason why you need Stardust and you'll be amazed by the results. And oftentimes when I try to make these type of comments, I am afraid of whether I can live up to whatever the promise or the hype that I'm giving you here. In this case, I'm highly confident that I can live up to that expectation. Okay, let's move on. So the concept behind Stardust, how does it work? Obviously it has some sort of a network. It has a deep learning network right there. What type of network? It can be anything. It can be a unit, for example, like it shows right here. And what does this unit predict? It actually predicts two things, not directly a semantic segmentation, in which case it's a regular unit. It's actually predicting the radial distance right there. You have an object, you have an object center, and it actually predicts the radial 32. I mean, this number is something that you can actually define as a default, I believe it's 32, but it defines these 32. Think of these as distance maps. Think of it generating 32 distance maps, yeah, for these objects. So that's one thing it uh, predicts. And the other one is the object probability, meaning the probability of uh, uh, being the center of the object. So right there, there's a good probability that that is the center of the object. As you go out, the probability of that being the center of the object actually goes uh, down, right? So this, in a way, the combination of these two is going to help in localizing your objects. Please read the paper, again, if you want a lot more details. But right after this, it's going to do this non-maximum suppression 
which means if you have these type of overlapping objects, yeah, if you have these type of objects like they depicted right here, then you have multiple potentially conflicting objects right there. So it's going to keep the object with the highest probability. That's exactly where this object probabilities uh, are going to fit in and remove everything where the intersection over union is uh, above uh, you know a certain certain uh, uh, threshold value that they define and uh, you only keep the ones with the highest probability this is how this algorithm actually started works at a high level i know i just breeze through that like anything because we plan on using this as another tool in our toolkit okay if you want to understand the algorithm go ahead and look at the paper, original paper. These guys have done an amazing, amazing job in coming up with this very nice, unique uh, idea for object segmentation. Okay, now what type of objects can be segmented? Any objects that has star convex structure. What does that mean? Think of it as you have an object, you're sitting inside the object. At one point inside the object, like pick a point, maybe like right there, you should be able to see every part of the boundary of this object that is star convex if i sit here i do not have a direct line of sight to this point right there that means this is non-star convex then star dish doesn't work so if your objects are rounded or some shape where there exists a central point from where you can see every part of the object then that is star convex as long as you have this this, is, or, uh, this, this algorithm works amazing. It doesn't matter what application you're in. As long as you have this, this works great. If you are trying to segment satellite images for roads or streets and all kinds of stuff, do not even proceed with this, uh, with this uh, you know, video. Uh, just look at UNET or any other form of uh, uh, segmentation. But if you are trying to segment uh, rounded objects, like, I don't know, even birds, <laughs> yeah, so clouds, something that's like roundish or having these type of shapes, then proceed right now. So let's go ahead and jump in. And I should start by just giving you the reference here. So uh, uh, in GitHub, you can look for Stardist, D-I-S-T, not Stardust, Stardist. And it explains every little detail. And in fact, again, a couple of tutorials that I'm going to uh, talk about this one and the next one, uh, not the next one, but a couple of tutorials I'm going to cover are out of the examples that these guys actually gave. They did a great, great job. And if you are a visual learner, if you learn from videos, if you learn from my type of videos, my explanation, feel free to watch all my videos. In fact, even if not, watch my videos, subscribe, like, all that stuff. Okay, so this can do 2D and 3D. And uh, again, the explanation right here, they also have, uh, I guess they have a webinar. So go ahead and uh, uh, look at the webinar by this at Neubias Academy. So there you go. So that's the reference. Now let me jump into the code. Now, how do you install this? First of all, to install, it's not as straightforward as you may think it. Uh, of course, you pip install Stardust. There are a few dependencies, so I'm not sure if you will run into any issues. So for these series of videos, I am choosing Google Colab because if you if I can do it on Colab, then you can do it too, right? I mean, this is uh, what uh, uh, the first quarter of April, uh, not April, for the first quarter of 2022, like in the May time frame. So uh, the, by the time I'm recording this video, so. Um, I'm using uh, Colab, so just to give you what environment I'm using right here. Okay, I am going to share this file with you guys, so don't worry writing anything down, so let's get started. So first thing first, let's go ahead and change our runtime. I hope you know how to set up Colab and all that, so I'm not gonna go through that. I am going to change the runtime to GPU because I need GPU for this one. Let's go ahead and connect it. And I have also connected my uh, Google Drive where I am going to place a few images. As you see, it's saying mounting Google Drive. So I can just load my images from the Google Drive account. So this is very, uh, these are basics of uh, Colab anyway. Okay, uh, we are all set, everything is connected. So let's go ahead and start by installing Stardust. Let's just do pip install Stardust. And this should be a pretty quick process on Colab. Okay, 
And uh, once the installation is done, I am going to import a few methods from the Stardish library. I'm going to import Stardish 2D from the models. Uh, I'm going to import test image nuclei 2D. It's just a test image that they supply. So we can test our uh, pre-trained algorithms on that and uh, render label, normalize, and pipe plot. So let's do that. And uh, to know what type of pre-trained uh, models do they offer, we can use the from pre-trained method and it's going to print out exactly what models are available. So let's go ahead and do that. And the models that are available are 2D versatile fluorescence, h and &E, and uh, DSB from their original paper and just a demo. So the two key things that uh, we can use are the fluorescence and HE. You can train your own model. I'm just talking about pre-trained models. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about how you can train your own model. In the video after that, I'm gonna talk about how you can use this HE train model to segment a whole slide image. And the one after that, I will actually use a pre-trained model but not on a fluorescence image, but on a different image, okay? So it gives you an idea of the different flavors of uh, Stardust. So let's keep an eye on this for now. So let us uh, just focus on fluorescence. By the way, fluorescence image, think of this as having a black background and bright objects, okay? That's in a way fluorescence if you're not uh, familiar with what uh, the microscopy term uh, fluorescence right there means. Okay, so now I am giving a few examples as part of this video. The first one is let's segment the nuclei in fluorescence images. So for that, let's use, uh, first of all, this 2D versatile fluorescence model, this one. So how do you call that? I'm assigning Stardust from pre-trained 2D versatile floor to my model. Let's do that. It's downloading the model right there. It's 530, no. Yeah, whatever that size is. And uh, it's downloading along with the model. It actually has like a whole bunch of other information. For example, the threshold value right there, probability threshold value right there. And when you train your own model, that can be actually set. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, even here you can actually set it, but let's not, let's not get into that yet. Let's save that for the next video. Okay, so uh, now let's import our image. Since I don't have any, any image as part of this exercise, I'm going to set my image as the test image that they supply. Remember, we just imported this from the library. And how do you segment an image? It's as simple as taking your model dot predict instance and then your image. Obviously, our image is going to be some 8-bit image, so we need to normalize it. So for that, I'm using normalize. And it outputs two different things. It outputs the labels and it outputs extra details that we are not going to focus on yet, but eventually we will be at some point as part of this video series. And that's it. I'm just going to print out or uh, plot the labels so you can see how the input image and the output labels look like. So now it's doing the predict instances part. So after that, it will go ahead and segment it. And the, and the next part, I'm going to show you how to segment custom image. There you go. So this is how fluorescence images look like. Some of these have bright uh, intensity. Some of these are dull. They seem to be connected. But look how amazing of a job it's doing in segmenting these. Well, what good is segmenting uh, some image that the developers supplied. Let's test it on our own image. So custom fluorescence image. I don't know where you would get that. I mean, uh, you can Google search for nuclei fluorescence and then download, which is exactly what uh, I may have done in this case. But uh, how do you do that? It's pretty straightforward. You need to read the image first. I'm going to use scikit image to read it. So let's import that library. And my fluorescence image is, I'm reading it from my drive, collab drive, where I placed my nuclei image. And I am defining a small area for now. Actually, let's not do that. Uh, let's not do that. Let's just define our image, load our image. Yeah, so now I have my image array. Let's plot it so you can see exactly how the image looks like. Yeah, this is how the image looks like. A whole bunch of objects, some of them are touching, some of them are free, some of them they have weird background. I'm curious how that background gets segmented, but this is what we have. And we need to model.predict instances on my image after normalizing it. There you go. And I'm also extracting my fluorescence details in case I need to get 
object properties. But for now, let's get it. Let's see if we'll use it or not. Okay, plotting time. Pretty amazing. I think that bright region, it thinks that it's nuclei. Yeah, which is not, I mean, we can play with a couple of uh, parameters to adjust that, but that's okay. I can always set a post image segmented uh, segmentation filter for that. Um, so let us actually zoom in to this image. That's exactly why I am only selecting a small area like right around here. So we can focus and learn a bit more about how this thing is actually performing. Um, that's not it. I have to run this line first, sorry. And then this one, so there you go, okay? Large images, and you can see the subnuclei uh, structure right there. Okay, let's go ahead and segment these and plot. You should see beautiful, colorful images where each object is very well separated. And now let's visualize the polygons. Remember, in this case, they are showing you these, uh, where is that, this polygon right here. So you can visualize that if you want. Uh, so that's exactly why I am unpacking the my uh, details from this uh, from this segmentation. The details contains all the information, the bounding box, the intensities, and uh, whatever information that you are looking for. The details actually contains that. Uh, in fact, it contains all the uh, local uh, local information about e each of your objects. So I'm taking that and I am trying to uh, visualize these polygons. Again, this part of the code I completely took from this uh, GitHub page from these guys. Uh, again, no point in reinventing if you can just take, copy it and mold it to whatever, uh, whatever uh, you're trying to do. But whenever you do that, uh, reveal your sources like I'm revealing right now. Complete credit goes to Stardust, use it, download it, publish your papers and uh, refer to this library so more people get to work on this library and then collectively we can improve it even more. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, visualize the polygons. It's pretty cool, you can see that's the center and you have all these polygons right here. So this is the 32, I think uh, the 32 value, we can set it again. I, I, I'll promise to talk about certain aspects of this in detail as we go along in this series of the next couple of videos, but uh, you should see 32 lines right there in 32 equally spaced angles. Uh, showing the boundary and these are the segmented uh, segmented objects. Now the third example I want to show you is using a HND image and this is an image I just downloaded. Again I gave you the downloaded link right here. So let's read the image first. So read the image and in case you're curious this image is that one that I just Google searched for and I got the image and how do we segment the nuclei in this image. So to do that I need to download the H and E model. So that's exactly what I'm assigning as HE model. It's downloading, there you go. And now let's extract our, uh, let's predict instances from our image and assign the labels to our HE uh, labels right there. Okay, so it says HE image. Okay, apparently I did not run that line, which makes sense. Let's go ahead. And this may take a, a few seconds, that's pretty fast segmentation done and let's go ahead and plot our HE labels and uh, it's making such a complicated task very easy like look how amazing the segmentation is compare it to the H and E input image on the left hand side again the rule is if objects are rounded or if you can actually see these areas uh, from from the center then this works great. But if you have blind spots when you're sitting in the middle of your object, then this is not the right tool for that. That's the only rule. Okay, so now let me show another example. Uh, the final one before I end this video. Thanks for your patience, by the way. This one is about how to train and segment your own images. I'm not gonna squeeze the entire training and segmentation and all that in this video, but I just want to show you the result. So I am, uh, I am loading a model that I already saved right there on my under my collab account and we'll do that in the next video. How to do that is the next video. I just want to show you that uh, I took this, I trained my own model and now I have an amazing segmentation of this to show you.
I promise I will not talk about how to crop your images and uh, how to apply these patch blending and all that. I promise that because Stardust people took care of it for us. You can upload, you can segment any size image without any worry, and that's what I plan on showing in the next few videos anyway. Uh, this is a large image, larger than whatever the size they probably trained the algorithm on. Oh, I know that. I trained it on 256 by 256, and this is larger than that. And I'm segmenting this image, and let us go ahead and plot it. There you go. Isn't that amazing? That's the input, that's the output image. So in the next video, we'll learn a bit more about how to do this using our own data sets. And in the video after that, like I promised, we will look at whole slide images and segment, I don't know, half a million, maybe quarter million objects in this entire uh, large image. So please stay tuned and hit the subscribe button so you get notified whenever those videos get uploaded. Thank you very much.